Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? I've had a fire lit under me by a spark set by Adobe. Adobe has released a new series of tools designed for us to create social graphics and videos. And the flagship of this product line is Adobe Spark, which we'll be looking at today on Dotto Tech. Our friends at Adobe have been in the forefront of graphics since the dawning of the computer age. Photoshop and Adobe's uh, Creative Studio are staples in the photography, imaging, and video space. Now, Adobe has decided to come back to the regular people these days, and they've released two products. One was on the smartphone. It was called Adobe Post, which we've looked at in previous videos and we'll return to look at. And they've actually renamed that to be Adobe Spark Post because they've also released a web-based tool called Adobe Spark, which is something kind of special, I think. Adobe Spark is designed for us to create graphics primarily for the social space, for social sharing. And Adobe's taken all of its knowledge of color and typography and composition and brought it together into this template delivery system that allows us to, for free, create some pretty wonderful social graphics. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of Adobe Spark today. I think this is actually gonna require a couple of other videos because I'm gonna to wanna to go in and deal in, in detail with post type graphics and with their video application, which is pretty exciting as well. But you basically sign up for Adobe Spark for free. And when you sign in, you're brought into their browser-based interface, which allows you to manage your projects and to create new projects as well as see what other people are doing with it. Now we begin by clicking on the plus sign, which brings us into a selector that allows us to determine what type of graphic or what type of element we want to create. Now we can create a post graphic, which is a graphic that's designed to go into a social post, a page, which I'll talk about in a moment, or a video. Let's talk about the page for a second because I think that's one that we're not going to use as much. Creating a web page creates a standalone web page, not a web page which is going to live on your site. Instead, this is for something that's kind of outside of your normal realm of, of web pages that you want to create, perhaps for an event or somebody's anniversary party or something like that. You might want to create a pay a web page itself. Now, this is a very nice web page builder, <clears throat> but I think for most of us, it's going to be the very odd time that we want to use it because it's not going to allow us to create content that's designed directly, say, for our our own WordPress site. So we'll leave pages for later. We will touch on video right now, however, and to, I have to tell you that this is not classic video like a talking head video like I'm doing now, but instead this is for slideshow type videos, an animated video that you create that tells a narrative. Very effective, we'll be looking at it in detail uh, coming up in another video, but we'll touch on it right now. Before we do that, however, let's take a look at the main thing that we'll probably be starting with, which is creating a post. Now this is a graphic for a post. Now they ask you, first of all, what text you're gonna want in the graphic. So I'm gonna put in a visit us online at Dotto Tech. There we go. So it's a nice little ad that I'm creating. And so once you've decided the text that you're gonna create, then you have to determine what format you want the graphic to be in. Now this is talking about orientation and size. Now they have optimized all of these different presets for different social platforms. For example, an Instagram post, a Facebook post, or a Twitter post. If we wanna take a look at more, we add more, and now we can see other social networks and other use cases, like Facebook. If you wanted to create a Facebook cover image or a Twitter header image, if you're updating your profile in LinkedIn and you wanna create new cover art for LinkedIn for the top header, then you would choose the LinkedIn cover art, and that will format the graphics for that particular platform, making sure that it's gonna fit ideally. Does this sound like another product that we've looked at in the past? Yeah, it looks a lot like Canva at this point because it's designed to do the same thing. It's designed to create social sharing graphics. Canva is designed to create social sharing graphics. This is just happens to be Adobe spin on that particular process. And like Canva, it's pretty much free out of the gate. And like Canva, it does a pretty awesome job. I think you'll agree. So let's create a Facebook ad. I click on Facebook ad and click continue. Now it's going to format the graphic for Facebook ads. And it brings us into our selector, which gives us the idea of themes, palettes, photos, and text. So these are all the different elements that are going to go into our graphic. Now the cool thing about this is this brings all of Adobe skills around color management and fonts 
into uh, into this place and allows us to quickly select all of those different elements that we want to use so if we take a look here we can see all of the different themes now just like the uh the the smartphone app adobe post which is now called adobe spark post these are pre-done templates that you probably won't use as they are, but they create something that invokes a bit of a narrative for you. If you happen to like the overall style, then you're going to go with it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start to replace different elements. And of course, we're going to replace the background art to start. So if we click on photo, we can see all of the different backgrounds that they give us that will allow us to change. And actually, even before I do that, let me just show you the palette. We can quickly select different color schemes just by choosing different palettes. And you see all of those little selection points here along the color? These are all the colors that are gonna work within that palette. I love this concept. I love the I love the flexibility and the control that it gives and the fact that I can choose a different color scheme and I don't have to worry about getting clashing colors, but I get ones that the experts at Adobe say work together. And I think they know more than I do about color. So this is pretty amazing. But I wanna start by changing the background photo. So. What we do is you go replace, and then what you can do is you can choose from your own Google Photo Library, you can choose a graphic that you wanna use. So I'm just gonna go here into my main photos, all, into all of my photos, and I'm gonna have a quick boo, and I'm gonna find a graphic. Oh, here we got wedding graphics from just a recent wedding that we were at. What's gonna be appropriate for this? What's gonna be appropriate for, I know, I know what I want. There we go, let's take a picture from a speaking engagement that I was just recently at. And here I am with a whole group of friends. There it is. These are all the speakers that were at social media marketing or at social media camp in Victoria. So I position that right there where I want it. Now, watch what happens as we start to play with it. So there's the group, you can't see me, so we'll have to change this around. But, so first thing we can do is if we start changing the palette, do you see how it actually changes the color cast on the photos behind, on the photo behind to match the graphics that we see. Then this is the part gets really cool. Let's go into the text and they've got this text treatment. They've got a little wheel here that allows us to spin through a variety of different type of graphics that we can position whoever, where we want and see how you can quickly now just browse through and see, oh, I like that one there. I like that one there, but I want to cover Bosco. I'll cover Bosco, Fanzo, <laughs> I'll cover all the kids. There we go. It will have all the old people on the right-hand side. It will cover all the kids on the left-hand side. There we go. But now you see how you can go through and you can create a graphic that is going to work for you and, and play with the colors, play with the styles, play with the background. And you can even go in and you can modify the individual fonts and you can get into all of that detail. If I just save this now, I can then choose and I can start adding more text. I can change the alignment. I can change the opacity. What's that going to do? Is that going to change the opacity? Gonna make it yes, it's gonna make it more or less opaque. There we go. Actually, that's not bad there. That kind of works right there. And so we can still see the people through. So you get an idea for what you can do with the graphic or with the with the graphic and the overall post. Then once you've done all of that, we and we click on the share button here at the top, and that will now save the post and allow us to share it. Now we can choose to publish it directly from Adobe Post or Adobe Spark, excuse me, or we can download the image to our computer and then we can upload it to our own website or we can upload it to any social platform we choose. So you've got some nice sharing options that are built in here. And you can of course at any time go back into the project file here and now we see this has been saved and I can go in and I can edit and modify this graphic at any point should I choose to. So that's basically setting up a post graphic within Adobe Spark. Let's quickly show you on the surface the video story. And we'll make this, and, and the video story, you will end up with multiple slides. Graphic is a single slide, video is gonna end up with multiple slides. And so I'm gonna begin telling a story. There we go, I have something to share with you is what we start with. And once we start, they've got a series of different templates here which you can just basically have a quick look at and you can use that take and creates kind of a structure for the slideshow, for the animated slideshow that you're about to create. So let's choose 
tell what happened. I'm going to choose this one here, and it loads then the template and the suggested graphics, and once again, everything is very modifiable. So they tell us what we can do here. We can record our voice so we can actually do a voiceover over the top. We can incorporate photos. We can, of course, play it back, and we can share the video once we're done. So once again, we've got our themes, but we've also got now music and layout, which allow us to do a couple of different options for it. So let's just choose uh, something colorful. Let's get some colorful lights. There we go. I choose lights, and now I add these slides. See, they've got all of these basic slides in here. Uh, that are started and all they do is they provide suggestions for what we might be doing But I'm gonna click on this slide here, and I'm gonna add text I could add a photo or I could add an icon. I'm gonna add text to it. And I'm gonna say here is a Story There we go, then I click on the next one The story of a man and I add another one. Uh, man, no longer young. Oh, I'm getting a dramatic lilt to my to my story. A man no longer young. He wasn't exactly old either. There we go. Oop, eater, either. There we go. All right. So we've got a simple story started. So now at any point here, I can click on the play button here at the beginning and we'll get an idea for what it's going to look like. Now, you see how it works. It's, it basically takes your slides and advances from slide to slide animating them as we go. Now, what it doesn't do is it doesn't have a lot of flexibility as far as how the slides are presented and entered, but it does have tremendous flexibility allowing us to basically change the entire look and feel with a single click of the mouse. So I just change from lights to grunge. Now let's watch the same thing. And you know what? This music sucks for this. Do you hear the music playing along there? So we're gonna just cancel this and we're gonna change the music. So we've got nice happy music. I'm gonna kinda go for something a little more dramatic, theatric. There we go, I've chosen a different music theme. I like this. It's working for me, is it working for you? <laughs> That's a pretty good story. I want, I want to know how it ends. Don't you want to know how it ends? So we've got an idea how we can modify the themes, which gives us an overall feel. We can add music to it. By clicking on the little plus, we can add photos or icons to it as well, as well as modify the, the text itself. And finally, we have a choice of actually laying out the way that it looks overall. So you can, like, we have it set up kind of as a single point at a time, but you can set it up with two points at a time or modifying it so that the text appears on one side or the other as you create it and you can adjust the layouts accordingly as you go on. Once you're finished with it, you can of course, once again, take it, you can download it as an MP4 video with the music embedded, or you can share it to different social platforms. Now I'm actually playing with using this and I'm marrying it with real video as teaser videos for Facebook. So there's a lot of ways that you can apply it within Adobe Spark. So and essentially Adobe Spark is a new social graphics creation tool from our friends at Adobe that allow us to create a variety of different type of post graphics and a variety of different slideshows, animated slideshows, as well as some web pages should we choose. But it brings Adobe's incredible sense of design and typography to bear. We can use their pre-built backgrounds and images, or we can import our own backgrounds and images. They have a bunch of license-free music that we can incorporate should we choose to, or of course, we can bring in our own as well. Overall, I think Adobe Spark is well worth you spending a few minutes and exploring. And if you're like me, it might end up being one of your new favorite social tools. I hope you found our video today to be useful. Now, there's three ways for you to stay in touch with us here on Dottotech. The first is please subscribe to this channel. And secondly, please subscribe to our newsletter. That way you hear about any upcoming courses or events that we have here at Dottotech. And finally, Dottotech is a community-funded channel. We're supported by the generosity of you folks at the crowdfunding site of Patreon. I encourage you to drop by our Patreon page, have a look, and discover what's involved in supporting Dottotech and what perks can come back to you should you choose to become 
one of our patrons. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. Mm-hmm.